Anyway, 1889, Major Blom, W-H-A-M, was the paymaster for this area. His job, he lived in Tucson. He would come over here once a month, go to Wilcox, uh, wait for the train, the Southern Pacific train come by in the 1880s, uh, and pick up the payroll. It was built in the 18, late 1880s, so it was brand new then. And then he would uh, pick up the payroll in gold, silver, uh, gold and silver coins and dollar bills, dollars. He would pay off the soldiers that, that uh, stayed uh, uh, permanently around Wilcox, Fort Bowie, and Fort Huachuca. Then he would come up to Fort Grant and pay them. Then he would take the, this road that right here that we're on, go here to Fort Thomas. Then he'd go to the San Carlos Apache, called the San Carlos Subagency, to pay the soldiers there. And then he would go up to Fort Apache and pay the soldiers. And that was the route he took once a month. And how long do you think that would take him, from, let's say, from Wilcox to Fort Apache? Twelve days. You any other guesses? Three days. They didn't waste time. Okay. Three days. Okay. Um, um, Twelve mules to be put in the corral here to wait for his wagons, the two wagons that he had, to change mules here. Um, he had two wagons. The first one was called a Doherty. It's the one that during the Civil War they called an ambulance. In later times, many people called it the Doherty an ambulance. It had a, a top on it, a canvas top on it, open sides, had a, a, a bench for the driver, and under the driver was a place that the, uh, the star, strong works would be stored. And then behind it, there were two seats, actually. Uh, and it was a spring wagon, so it was pretty comfortable. So um, <clears throat> there was a soldier at Fort Grant who just got relieved, and he wanted to ride to Fort Thomas. So he was in the wagon with Major Huam. And then there was another uh, gentleman who was Huam's, uh, uh, what is it, uh, the guy that counted the money and accountant, that is the accountant was with him. And uh, then, uh, then they were followed by a wagon that had um, seat, it had no springs, really rough and just seats in it for the soldiers. Uh, all total, uh, they were all black, the soldiers were all black, had two officers, two non-coms, uh, a uh, sergeant and a lieutenant, and uh, eight, eight, eight black soldiers. Uh, very experienced, they were did not call them to themselves at the time buffalo soldiers. That was, uh, wouldn't have fit around here anyway because there weren't very many buffalo in this part of the country. Given to the black soldiers in the plains, with the, against the plains Indians who named them, but not, yeah, but uh, yeah, only until the 20th century we really first started calling them uh, the buffalo soldiers. And it was called that because of their hair. He didn't have enough of it to demonstrate right. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, they were really rough and tumble guys. When you hear the story of the Juan robbery, you'll know how rough and tumble they were. So from Fort Thomas, this was the first way station. He left Fort Thomas about uh, uh, six o'clock in the morning and we we're gonna got to get here. This was an uphill climb all the way. This is one of the roughest areas. And down here, there's a downhill, there's a high eagle path. And we just don't get the elevation unless you walk in it or something like that. How much elevation you come from it's a long, long struggle. So he, uh, they got up here a little before noon. 